What's up, guys? <clears throat> Let me just get some uh, chilling music in the background. So I bought a lot of new gear, or not a lot, I bought some new gear and I also bought these uh, special bags to keep all my gear because as of now I keep it in this, uh, in this toolbox and it's not really optimal because uh, you know everything is just, uh, is just thrown in there and every time I have to get something from the bottom I have to pick all the things out from the top and it's pretty annoying so I bought these bags I haven't opened them yet so we'll check them a little bit uh, later here but uh, <coughs> I wanted to, to show you my new uh, setup as some of you know I used to use this thing here it's uh, it's uh, it's called a cheese plate, and normally it's used to be it's used for mounting on special cameras, and then on the cameras you will be able to add more things. But I found the idea to use this to to make my live streaming setup. So I put my tripod here, you know. And then I can put whatever I want here. If it has these holes in them, if it, if it, you know, if it can take the standard camera, camera uh, ho screws and holes, then I can put it here. So this is the one I used to use. But I always found it a little bit ugly because. You know, it, it is pretty ugly, you know, when, when the gimbal hangs here and this hangs here, it, it looks pretty ugly, this, this thing. I don't like the look of it that much. So I bought a new one. And also, instead of this ball head, which, uh, which takes up too much place, so when you have one, you cannot have another one next to it because uh, you know it's pretty bulky so it kind of you know there's not there's not a lot of space you you can you can get them pretty close but you have to fiddle around with it for a very long time to get it on you have to put it on in a specific uh, in a specific uh, way you know you have to put it on then hold it and then put the other one on and then you know, it's pretty fiddly, so I bought a new one, I bought this one, it's much smaller, so on the, on the first, on the, in the first look, you know, it doesn't seem optimal because it's smaller and you need to put, you know, a lot of things on it, but this one, it also has holes here in the side. No, except for these holes, it also has holes here in the sides. 
so even though it's smaller it's actually easier because you can also put things in the side here so that's what I did here now it comes now it comes like this without anything on it and this is just the one I use here to put my gimbal on it this is an adapter So I'm gonna show you a pretty cool setup. I'm gonna I'm gonna mount everything on this. I'm gonna mount two power banks, and I'm gonna mount the gimbal, and uh, and the phone, and the secondary phone. I got uh, a couple of these It's the same one that I have here this paper so this is how it looks and it has holes in the sides too so even though it's smaller than the other one the other one is huge this uh, can do the same work because of the holes in the side it's easier to get to so it's it's even better than this one I think even though this is bigger there is another one that's this small, but it's a little bit bigger, but it's almost this small, but it doesn't have holes in the side. But this one with the holes in the side is much better because uh, you can easier add more things. So to add the gimbal here we can also add a light for example but I don't have any light currently I'm, I'm looking for to buy a light but uh, they are pretty expensive so I'm waiting with it so this is how we got it so far let me get my other phone holder here I got these from Manfrotto, they are okay, you know, they are a little bit expensive, but uh, they can lock the phone also, so you can lock it in, that's pretty good, it's, it, they feel a little bit plasticky, but, but it's the only option here in Bulgaria, so what I would do is, I would add this one here, gimbal here with the phone and then you know I can I can have the other phone here on the gimbal which will, which will point this way and I can watch the chat here so it's pretty comfortable this way
So what you can also do with this thing here You add one more here Last time I did this video I didn't have these so it was a little harder to add the power bank so I didn't show it but this time I'm gonna show it you add one more here so it gets pretty heavy with the power bank so I wouldn't recommend you walking around like this because because it's gonna be pretty heavy for you and uh, and uh, this is more if you are somewhere, for example, at a bar and and you want to have everything uh, combined and you can quickly move it from one table to another table. So you can have everything here. You don't have to have a power bank in the pocket going up to this. You can just have it here and you can just lift everything very easily. But it is pretty heavy. So when you add the power banks, it's not really for a mobile uh, streaming, you know, going around. It's more for some semi-stationary streaming where you, where you like at a bar or something. So this is gonna look pretty crazy. So I have two more mobile holders, these are some cheaper ones. very well because of the dark background so this is how it looks now it looks pretty crazy you could also add the uh, three phones so you have four phones in total I don't know what you would use it for but just an example so if you have these smaller power banks, 10,000 milliamp hours, you add one here. And you add one here. You can also just add one, you know, but if you really, one of these, they can charge, they have two ports so they can charge both phones. But it is a little bit cooler if you have if you have three power, two power banks. So what do you say about this? Have you seen anything crazy like this? And you know it is it's not that heavy. You can walk around it, walk around with this for like uh, one, two, three hours maybe. But you are gonna get stationary streaming where you where you are at one place and you want to charge the phones and you want it to be easy to like move around maybe you are at at some event or something and you are moving around but you are but you are often you know putting it down so this is a good way to be able to have everything here and you know you have this charging this phone and this charging the other phone so it's it's, it's really comfortable this way. You probably never seen anything like this. And also if you if you walk around with this and film people, they are gonna be absolutely flabbergasted when they see you. They're gonna think, what the fuck? 
What the fuck is this? So it looks pretty badass, huh? My wig. I just, uh, I just thought of this, and no other streamers are thinking in these terms. You know, they just buy some selfie stick for ten dollars. This is a little bit more expensive, but it's actually pretty cheap compared to what you get for it. If you want the selfie stick with uh, two phones, they cost around fifty dollars, and for fifty dollars, you're almost gonna get this set up. So this is much more worth it. You know, it's modular. You can you can add more things. You can add a light also, for example, here, it's, there's no, there's no limits almost. You can even, you can even add the other one here, you can add this, you can screw it onto this, for example here, and then you can add even more things, so it would get pretty crazy in the end. But it is heavy, you know, so the more you add, the more heavy it, it will become. But uh, usually when I walk around, I don't have the two power banks. So I just have the phone and the gimbal on here. And maybe in, in, in the future I will add a light that I will add some uh, from time to time when it's dark. But uh, it is pretty cool. Let me get a good shot of it for, for a thumbnail. I hope it shows. Yeah, you know, uh, you could get robbed with it, as uh, Bjorn hates them, says in the chat, but, uh, you know, you have, yeah, it is, it, but you know, actually maybe not because when you walk around with a selfie stick, people are just thinking that you are some uh, idiot filming and they could rob you if you have a nice phone, but when you walk around like this, they are more inclined to think that you are a journalist and people don't run around and rob journalists so it has a kind of a, a, a what is it called a, a factor that, that like scares them away because it looks much more professional so you know have you ever heard of people robbing journalists maybe happen these days under the George Floyd process, it happened one or two times, but generally, you know, you don't run around and rob journalists. And with, with with a bigger setup like this, you look more professional. You look like some kind of filmmaker. Maybe you have a team around you; they cannot see them. So, I think you are less in in line to get robbed actually, because they're gonna be more flabbergasted. They're gonna look. It's gonna attract more views, but. You know, you will also have more eyes looking at you and they will be more scared to rob you, I think. So, and also people when they see it, they are going to be shocked, you know, and you can talk to more people there, then they're not... If you come up with a selfie stick, you're just a, an annoying kid, but when you come up like this, you look like a professional and, you know, if, if a journalist comes up to you and starts filming, nobody starts attacking them. So, in that, in that sense, it's... It could be better, I think. I haven't, you know, I haven't done so much experience, but as far as, as far as I have done, you know, people are more scared of you than you are of them. So when they see you like this, they they would rather avoid you than they would uh, come and rob you, for example. But you wouldn't walk around with the power bank because it's simply too heavy like that. So you would just walk around, you know, with a phone and you know would remove these things here. I also have this when I charge my phones. It's pretty hard to find enough. Uh, enough outlets and you know these big uh, these big things with five outlets they are, they are pretty they are pretty big, big 
but this look how compact it is and you can have five outlets on it and normally when you cannot you cannot order because uh, one blocks the order and they get hot but this way you know it's very easy to have five charges and and they are all they are all very far from each other so the heat doesn't transfer from one charger to another so it's pretty cool this this thing here <laughs> yeah Karim most people just have a selfie stick but you know I maybe I haven't streamed that much but I keep buying a gear so it's kind of a joke right now but uh, I hope I will be using it more often because I'm buying so much gear that that's that is that it's a shame that I don't get to use it that much but the weather is kind of bad here so it's raining these days So when I carry my power banks, I carry them in these socks, so they don't uh, trash around in there. But I just bought this today, and I'm pretty uh, interesting to see how they are. Because right now I just keep all my gear in this toolbox here, and. Uh, it's pretty annoying every time I want some, something from the bottom I have to pick everything up so Should be around 10 centimeters. And inside you have these for cables and things like that. So you have these so you can make it uh, into different compartments and you can determine the size yourself. So that's that's how it would look. I have two of these. So that's pretty cool. I can keep almost everything in here, I think. In these two, I can keep my power banks, my gimbal, everything. Try it out. So these pockets here are two. No, you can't fit the charger in some of them. I think no. It's too small for a charger. So you need to keep the charges. Down here, for example, you keep a couple of charges here. So 
So, mm. for example, you can have cables, you can have other things here. It's pretty cool, this bag. It's some kind of Chinese one. I think they cost around uh, four to eight dollars in Alibaba. So they are pretty uh, cheap. And uh, the quality is great. You know, for the price, it's it's amazing quality. I would say. But yeah, I think. Uh, that's basically it. I wanted to show this new one here. It it looks like some kind of a, some kind of a weapon or a, or a fighter jet or something like that. Did I buy anything else? Let me check. No, I didn't. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make <clears throat> this stream as long as the last one because the last one was like an hour and a half and uh, some people complained that it was too long, so... I just wanted to show my new gear off, I'm pretty happy about this, I want to go out and use it somewhere. So next time when you see me streaming and you see people that uh, are like shocked at the, at the things I use, you know, people come up there totally shocked. They start to ask me, what is this? How did you do this? Now you know why, you know, when you see people get flabbergasted and ask me questions about my equipment, now you know why they are asking questions. It's not just a regular selfie stick. It just looks, it just looks so cool that, you know, they have to ask you questions. It's also a kind of, it's kind of a conversation starter. It could be some kind of conversations. It could be a conversation starter sometimes. So. That's also one of the reasons I started thinking like that because when you run around with a selfie stick for example here in Bulgaria when, where people are not used to this they think you're a big idiot you know and they, they laugh at you I, I hear some re remarks when I walk past people I hear some remarks about about me you know so you know you Like this, you know, you are still gonna hear remarks, but they're gonna be more like, wow, what, what is this guy doing? Instead of like, uh, who's this idiot? So, yeah. I'm pretty happy about this. It looks so good. I cannot imagine that any streamers, that no streamers have thought about this. Because it is actually pretty cheap, you know. This tripod costs fifteen dollars, and the same with the plate that everything is on. It cost. It also costs around fifteen dollars. So this plate costs around $15 too and these things that I mount everything on they cost uh, a couple of dollars I think it's uh, six, five, six dollars or something like that. So to get this set up you know with a, with a phone with this plate you know it, it's gonna cost you gonna cost you maybe $60 or something like that 
and for example this tripod this has 10 years warranty so it's really sturdy it's and it's really light because it's aluminium so it won't break and uh, uh, these selfie sticks they keep breaking so here you can have this phone mount for example it could break but a phone mount costs a couple of dollars so you just have to replace the phone mount but this plate here it will last you forever you know or almost forever it will last you five ten years or something like that and the same with this so yeah people they don't know what live streaming is so they I've, I've heard so many remarks you know it sometimes it makes me feel like an idiot you know things like uh, who is this guy think he is with that selfie stick and uh, uh, all kinds of things I've, I've heard a couple of things when people and they say them loud enough so you can hear them and it's kind of annoying you know I'm gonna start pressing some of these people you know they're not gonna be allowed to fuck around with me <clears throat> so I, I'm looking every day in Facebook events and I want to find something good and interesting to stream because uh, you know I have been doing a couple of streams where I just walk around you know it's not that interesting so I want to find some interesting things to do and uh, I'm looking for some events to crash and I'm sure I'm gonna find something very funny and interesting so if you haven't subscribed then uh, you need to subscribe so you don't miss out <coughs> Yes, Alpha Andy, that's me. No, actually it's hard to be an Alpha when you're walking around with all this equipment, you know, because uh, it's hard to fight with this equipment. But uh, actually I noticed something that, uh, you know, the Alpha streamers, they are not the ones that pretend they are, they are Alpha, for example, like Ski Mask Andy. Ski Mask Andy pretends he's this big alpha alpha guy and uh, when people presses him it's not that funny to look at because you know sometimes it is when he starts wanting to stab them and stuff like that but generally the more funny streamers are the ones that get pressed so people love to see a streamer get pressed they love to see it they, they love to see a streamer get pressed like a little pussy so that's actually more funny so I'm not gonna be a this big alpha guy because it's not that funny to watch you know it's I think it's more funny to watch uh, streamers that get pressed than streamers that press other people so for example captain content and things like that when, when they get pressed these guys it's much more funny when they get pressed you know people like to see see the streamers get pressed they don't like to see the, the streamers press people that much even though it can be very funny sometimes, but the thing that's more funny, I think, is where is where when uh, when the streamers get pressed and and like little pussies, is actually more funny. I think, for example, Ski Mask, you know, he he mostly presses people, and it's mostly not that fun to watch. It's more fun to watch uh, uh, a guy like Captain Content get pressed or Bjorn when he gets pressed or some of the other streamers when they get pressed Ice Poseidon for example people love to see the streamers get pressed they don't like these uh, big alpha andies they, they like uh, they like to see them get pressed I think Karim if I was in Denmark I would find a lot of things why don't you try uh, and go to Nerbro and do some filming there? You you could get a lot of viewers there. People uh, are gonna gonna troll in the chat a lot. I think if you walked around in Nerbro and just did 
did some some IRL there, walked around. Uh, people would get crazy in the chat. You know, you could get a lot of viewers from that. If I was in Denmark, I would I would walk around in Nørrebro and uh, find some funny people there. You know, people would would people would would love to hate watch it in and and go crazy in the chat and you would gain a lot of viewers from that i think yeah ski mask is a lot of talk <laughs> he talks really tough but uh, you know i don't think he's a tough guy. he's too small to be tough you know he's Somebody is gonna carry this guy away and he's, he's kind of stupid because uh, he acts way too tough and he, he's gonna do some, he's gonna, he's gonna press the wrong guy sometimes, sometime and uh, it's gonna go bad for him I think so, ski mess and he's not really that popular you know, so the most popular streamers are the ones that get pressed all the time. Ice Poseidon used to get pressed a lot. Captain Content, when he gets pressed, he, he has like 1,500 viewers. So, people love to see their fa favorite streamer get pressed. People like Ski Mask, they are not that... Or, or for example, EBZ. EBZ, he never gets pressed almost. He always presses people. If they press him, he fights back. And you know, he doesn't earn a lot of viewers from that EBZ. People just don't want, want to watch that so much. You know, it's more funny to see them get pressed. If, if EBZ gets pressed, he's gonna get a lot of views from that. So maybe he should stop acting so tough and allow people to press him a little bit more because the viewers would like it a lot more, I think. <coughs> Uh, Karim TV has has actually streamed with Bjorn a couple of times. If you check out Karim's channel, maybe if you if you type Karim TV and Bjorn, you will see that that he has streamed a couple of times with Bjorn. So uh, Karim TV, he knows Bjorn. They have streamed a couple of times, so you should check him out. <coughs> But I can't stream with Bjorn. I'm trying to get Bjorn to come to Bulgaria. I keep telling him come to Bulgaria and uh, he's afraid to come to Bulgaria. The last time I talked to him on Discord, on voice, <coughs> and I told him, you know, come to Bulgaria. And the question he asked me, but, 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 but is Bulgaria safe? So he's scared to come down here. I don't know why. Bulgaria is, is, is pretty safe, you know, in, in many ways, you know, it's it's at least as safe as Denmark. It's not the more more dangerous than Denmark. So I don't know why why he's scared, but apparently he's scared of Eastern Europe. Yeah, but I live in Bulgaria, so Bjorn he doesn't want to come here. So that's why I haven't been streaming with him. If I was in Denmark, I would have sniped him a hundred times, but uh, he doesn't want to come to Bulgaria for now, but uh, I'm I, I keep telling him, but maybe when he goes on this interrail trip, he's gonna go to this interrail trip uh, in a couple of weeks or something like that, so I hope that he doesn't stop at Slovenia or, or wherever he's going there and he comes to Bulgaria. Yeah, he's scared of Romania too. <laughs> Bjorn, he's... <laughs> it's actually a Danish thing because uh, when I went to school in Denmark, we, we were going to... Uh, the teachers asked us, where do, we, where do you want to go in Europe somewhere? We're going to take the whole class to some country. And uh, I really, uh, I really, I, I, 
I told a couple a couple of the other pupils, you know, let's let's press the teacher to go to Bulgaria, and uh, we were a couple. We said let's go to Bulgaria, and the teacher said said uh, I don't think it's safe enough to go to Bulgaria, so we're just gonna go to Czechoslovakia. So we were in Prague, but uh, it's a Danish thing, you know. They're still afraid of Bulgaria and Romania when you go this far to Eastern Europe. They think it's it's some kind of dangerous place. But actually, I would say, you know, after I went to Prague, Bulgaria is much, much, much safer than Prague. Prague is, is fucking dangerous compared to Bulgaria in Prague. But I don't know, but in, in Prague, you know, uh, people are selling fake drugs everywhere. People are trying to hustle tourists everywhere. In Bulgaria, there's not that many tourists. So it's not that organized, the, the hustling tourist business, especially in Sofia, in the capital, there's not much tourists in the capital. <coughs> so uh, uh, it's not like in Prague, for example, in Prague, there's, there's thousands of people that, that are organized around hustling tourists because, you know, there are so many tourists there. There are many, many, many thousand tourists, new tourists a day. So in Prague, they are organized, organizing hustling choice. Sometimes even the police are in on it and things like that. So that's not something you would see here in the capital because there's not that many choice. So if you if you lift off of, of, of cheating choice, then you would not uh, get any money because there are not enough choice here. So it's actually more safe than Prague and Czechoslovakia, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. Prague is is a goddamn scam city. When I was there, I remember we we wanted so hard to find the hashish, you know, weed, and uh, finally we found it one day. And this guy, he comes up to us with with his friend, and yeah, you want, you want, yes, yes. And everybody is asking you, you want pot marijuana, and it's all fake. And uh, this one guy came up and, you know, I have it, I have it, it's real, I promise you. And he takes up hashish, we wanted to find hashish, not pot, because we had found pot. So he takes up this uh, dark thing, you know, pot in the bag, and uh, he gives it to my friend. And my friend takes it, and he takes it up to smell it, to, to, to smell if it's real, you know. And the second he smells it, the guy says, Police, 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 hide it. And, and my friend hides it and just gives him the money and he goes away. And the moment he goes away, my friend takes it up again and smells it. And wow, that's not hashish after him. And we tried to run after him, but he was long gone. And one of the scams they do, they, they, they sell you, uh, they try to sell you pot, you know, we have marijuana pot. And come, come smell it. And then they, they put their hand in the bag and take a little bit up. And what they do in the in the bag, there's some kind of uh, some kind of flour mix or something. It's not it's not pot, but the guy actually touched. He he actually uh, has my marijuana on his hands. You know he probably has real marijuana in his pocket, and he he did you know he took some marijuana and he did like this with it. And then when you come out to smell the bag, you know, he, he, he takes his fingers in the bag and he takes it up and he pulls his fingers in your nose. You can feel, you can even feel his fingers and he pulls, he pulls, uh, you know, the, his fingers in your nose and you smell, mm, that smells like marijuana, but it's, it's actually his fingers smelling like marijuana. It's not the, the thing he takes up of the bag. So they are pretty big horses, man. And uh, they try to scam you everywhere in Prague. So Prague is, is very bad, I think. In terms of scam, you know, there's also this guy in YouTube. He only does Prague scams. If you if you find him, I, I don't remember what his name, but, but what his name is. But there is this guy on YouTube. He walks around in Prague and exposes scams all the times. And there's so, so many scams. And... There's nothing like that in Bulgaria. It's 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 not at, it's not like that at all. So 
it's it's much safer than Prague. You know, when I was in Prague, I got hustled very many times. But uh, in Bulgaria, you wouldn't get hustled like that because there's there's no organized hustle against the tourists like that. There is a little bit in the coast cities. If you go to Sunny Beach and Golden Sands in the coast, that's a tourist place and only tourists come there. So there you could get hustled a little bit in the cabs and in the in the in the massage parlors, in the prostitute places. You could get hustled different places. But it's still not as bad as Prague. Prague is really, really, really scammy, so Ah, you have seen it. It's it's pretty popular all over the world. I think a lot of people watch him. You get him recommended this Prague Prague choice guy or something like that. I don't remember his exact name, but uh, he is pretty popular. It is pretty interesting to watch some of his videos. I've seen most of the scams there. I have seen them all. So, but there's none of this here. There's no fake monks here. There's no. There's none of that here. So. It's, it's much safer than than, uh, than Prague, so maybe Bjorn, he went, he, when Bjorn goes to Slovenia, he's going to get hustled so hard and he's going to think that Bulgaria is even worse, but Bulgaria is actually much safer, so. I hope I can convince him, if some of you talk to him, then convince him, convince him to Bulgaria. It would be pretty funny with Bjorn here, the content king, and he has a Danish guy here, so I will take care of him, he don't have to worry about me hustling him, I will just leech a little bit and then, then that will be it and I will take care of him. But guys, I've been, I made a video, I have delete, I have uh, hidden it, but I made a video how I bought it, the, the Sadit, and uh, I bought it post on the Sadit, and uh, it's pretty, pretty easy, and uh, I made this video how I make a post go to number one on Sadit, and the mods are pretty uh, mad at me, they called me a terrorist, and things like that, so, I'm not getting on IP2 uh, any moment soon. But you know, I don't really care anymore because uh, I think I will be much bigger than, than all the streamers on uh, IP2 combined. Actually, they're all losers, you know. No, none of them, not even one of them, not even Ice Poseidon compares to any real big YouTuber, you know. A big YouTuber, Ice Poseidon is not one of them. Any big YouTuber, you know, they have at least a couple of million followers, maybe a million, at least a million plus, you know, and Ice Poseidon never came close to that. So even though he had a lot of viewers on the live stream, if, if for example, a real popular YouTuber goes live, if Casey Neistat goes live, if uh, Marcus Brown Lee, if, if any of the big YouTubers, if uh, Unboxing Therapy goes live, if any of the big YouTubers go live, they are going to have a hundred K viewers. So none of these streamers are anything really. They're not, they're not, it's actually a WeChat. It's actually to, to want to stream like this. It's actually, it's actually the WeChats doing it. The WeChats who cannot uh, create a big YouTube channel. They found this way to get a couple of hundred uh, live viewers and it's, it's actually not something you can get success with, I think, so. It's not really something to strive for that much because IP2 is actually, all these IP2, Ice Poseidon Live, you know, they are actually, they're actually like a new YouTuber, all of them, there's not one of them that's popular, that, that's a big YouTuber, none of them. The only thing, the only ones that are that are big are the ones that are added without uh, them knowing, like Tom Green, uh, even the LM, LM, no, LMG is not that big, but for example, Tom Green, and uh, who was, was more, 
and uh, and uh, and that guy, what is he called, with the tattoos in his face? Uh, uh, jumper, twin jumper. What is? That guy jumper, you know. Yeah, they called me a terrorist. Uh, uh, the the mod uh, felon felon mosk felon mosk. Uh, what is it called? The modern said it felon mosk felon mosk something. He called me a terrorist, and uh, I'm not really happy about that because uh, no jumper. Yes, Adam twenty two. No jumper. He's a big YouTuber too, uh, but yeah, most of them they are they are really small and it's really a uh, uh, recharge that that try to go that try to get popular that way. So it's it's not real YouTubers. They are, they are just recharge trying. To, they will probably never be successful any of them. So it's actually a bad way to get into YouTube, but you know. I really didn't want to, I wanted to go in this another way, but I, I kind of fell on the wagon to get some quick, uh, some quick viewers this way and try to get on IP2, but, uh, uh, you can find the video if you go to, uh, the Reddit, not the Sadit, if you go to Sadit on Reddit, you know, on Reddit, Sadit has its own Reddit. Go to Reddit and find Sadit's Reddit uh, subreddit. Sadit has a subreddit on Reddit, and there some snitch, some snitch, posted my video and complained to to Magnora Seven there, and uh, they actually banned my whole ISP. My whole ISP is banned from going on Sadit because they are they are scared of me for some reason, but. Check it out there, I have a video, it's in three parts, when you go to that video, it's posted there, I have privated it, but you can find it on the Sadits Reddit, on Reddit, on, on the subreddit Sadit, yeah, you know what I mean, and it's, it's number three or four there in the top, and uh, I live streamed how I'm botting Sadit. And you know they called me a terrorist, and they don't negotiate with terrorists and th and shit like that. So, so they're mad at me the most, and they don't want to put me on IP two. But uh, you know, actually, IP two is just recharge, so it doesn't really matter. You you cannot get really big on IP two. It can it can push you a little bit in the start. You can get your first. Uh, 5,000 subs there, but you know if you want to get big then Then it's more of a hassle, you know people are reporting your videos They're taking the stream that's down and things like that. So say so None of these youtubers are big in any way not a single one of them not even ice Poseidon EP community is very toxic and uh, and what I found out when I bought it, the said it, what I found out is after I bought it, you know, they closed a lot of things down and then you saw that all the posts, no post had more than 20 upvotes, you know, most of them have like 8, 10 upvotes. Every post on said it that has more than 20 upvotes is bought it, I can guarantee you. Now they have loosened it a little bit because they said it looks totally dead if they don't allow this. So they just banned my ISP and then they opened up again so everybody can bot. So everybody is botting except me. You know, I can still bot through a VPN. But uh, if, you, if you see something on the front page, it's always botted. I guarantee you every single post on the front page is botted. So... It, there's no viewers there. You think there's like a couple of thousand there. When you look, there's like 160 active. There, it's not even 100. It's like 20, 30 people in there. There's no, there's, there's, 
there's never more than 50 people on Shaded and and most of them they don't upvote posts, they just watch things. If you see something with over 20 upvotes, I can guarantee you 100% it's always spotted. If something is on the front page with 100 upvotes, it's guaranteed bought it. None of it is. And what I found out when I bought it things, people join in and start bought my things too. And it's pretty strange. If you watch my video, you're going to find it on Reddit, on the site. You will see that, that people start botting my, my post also. So there are some people that just bought posts in there, but it's not real people. Yes, that, that's it. User on stream shows that he has made multiple else to bot posts and say, that's my video. It's, it's on my YouTube channel, but I have just privated it. But uh, you can watch it afterwards and uh, see what you think. I, if you watch it from part one, you will see I wait for a post and a brand new post comes up and I just choose a random post and I bought it to number three on Reddit. A little after that, it became number one on Reddit. And the funny thing is, they watched the video, all the mods watched the video. I found out because there's not a many people watching my videos. So I found out that they are actually using Discord, the mods are using Discord to communicate with each other because I could see on my video that uh, that I got viewers in from Discord to watch that video and it was the mods, you know, because they were the ones watching it and afterwards they they deleted the post, the post I bought it. It's pretty funny because I didn't post it and I started, I had a little war with them because I bought it one of my own posts and that's where when they called me a terrorist and then then I started botting random posts and then they then they delete the post I bought but every post on the front page is botted so <laughs> it's pretty funny they they just kill the messenger they kill me for telling how easy it is to bot any ouchies kid on in any ouchies 13 year old kid can bot post and say it any idiot can do it you can do it right now if you watch my videos. In my video, it's a guide on how to do it. It's so easy. And they just uh, they just ban my ISP, my whole ISP. Not not just my IP. They banned my whole ISP from Sadie. Even if I change my IP, I'm still banned from there. So, it's pretty lame. They think... I don't know what they're doing. They, they, they don't want me to expose that, that say it is getting bought and, and that how easy it is and that everybody can do it. But in fact, it all, all the posts is bought. There's nothing real in there. Take a look at new posts and scroll down and look that, that when all the posts, they, they don't have more than 20 views. One or two have a hundred and those are the ones that are getting bought it. No, they all. Everybody with above twenty is bought. So there's not more than twenty, thirty people that are upvoting things. The rest of the people, maybe there's fifty, sixty people at any one time watching. When it says hundred sixty, it's not true. There's like in total, there's like hundred fifty people watching at the stadium. There's not more than that. And at any one time, there's like fifty people in there. And most of them don't upvote anything. So there's no people there. There's nothing there. So people think it's this big community. But it's actually, there's no community at all. It's like 20 people. How are you going to get big on YouTube with, tw with 20 people, man? That, that's, that's, that's crazy. You get nothing from that community. There is a couple of more viewers on uh, on IP2, you know. that, that But on Sadie, there's almost... There's no people in there. It's only the most crazy people and the most extreme people and, and they are not many, you know, they are, they are like... At any one time it's not more than, than 50 people and 20 of them are upvoting things, not more than that. So, whatever you see on the front page, it's not getting upvoted, it's, it's, it's just fake, it's just old, all the comments 
it's all it's all all in there it's a couple of people running this whole thing probably a lot of them are moderators too so it's all fake so so it's so I don't really care if they don't put me an IP2 it's a dead community it's it's totally dead so they they you know okay Karim see you if you live stream I'm gonna check in on you pay afterwards so it's all part of you think they have 4,000 members? <laughs> they <don't laughs> and they post like, we have 4,000 members. Man, you don't have more than 100 members in there. And that's the truth. You know, they don't have more than 100 members. It, and, and they allow it, you know, they allow it. If you try to expose it, they will ban you and, and you will never get in there again. And that's what they did to me. They banned my whole IP for exposing this. And uh, it's crazy, you know, they kill the messenger, but they don't fix the issue. They could make, you know, email verification or IP, you know, check maximum one user per IP. But no, you know how easy it is to make an account in there. You just type a username and a password and then click create and that's it. And then you can just bot from, from one IP. You can just create a hundred accounts. You just make a list with all the accounts. You make the you make the password the same on all accounts, and then you just pick random names and you create a hundred accounts. There's nothing stopping you. You can create one hundred accounts right now in in one hour, and then you can bot. And you know if you bot a post when it get when a post get gets posted. If you bought it quickly, you know, if it gets posted and you immediately start uh, logging in and logging out and clicking upvote, it only takes around uh, 40, 30, 40 accounts to get a number one on IP2. So, uh, number one on Sadie. So, it, it's so easy to bot posts and, and they're simply all bought it and the, the, the community doesn't exist. It's, it's simply all fake. Skull guys. But yeah, I just watched Blaze stream the other day and he he didn't drink at all and I don't know if he's gonna find something to do where people are gonna watch him without him drinking because uh, he's not really an, an interesting person when he's not drunk. I remember at all the RV trips where other people were, were you know, Blade usually only goes live when he's gonna drink, but uh, on the Ivy trips, people are filming him when he's not drunk, and he's he's very boring. So he's not even worth watching when he's not drunk. So his channel are probably gonna die out if he stops drinking, but he's probably gonna keep drinking on his, until his legs fall off. It's gonna be a couple of months, you know. He's gonna try to do this. But it, when it doesn't work, he's gonna start drinking again and... <clears throat> no, it's not, it's not 1k, for sure, it's not 1k. It's, it's not 1k at all. I guarantee you it's not 1k. It could be a couple of hundred, it could be two, three hundreds or something like that. But, um... It's, it's, I don't really think it is because there's so many, like I have, I have, uh, I have, uh, how many was there? I don't remember right now, but I have like 80 olds in there. I have 80 olds in the city before my ISP get banned. My olds are not banned, 
So it's pretty funny. I can go in from another IP and I can bot with all my ADOs. Even, the, even though they know them all, they're not banning the olds. They just banned my IP. So it's pretty crazy. I have 80 olds. I'm one person and, and I'm a small potter. You know, people, when, when I bought some things, I noticed that other people bought my things with like, uh, with like uh, a couple of hundred more likes. So some people have a hundred, a hundred olds. Some people have 200 olds. So, one person can have 500 olds, there's nothing stopping him from that, so... Björn, he is streaming a little bit with Jens, so I think he's still pretty funny for me, you know, but uh, when, when there is other interesting streamers, I don't watch Björn that much, but yeah... Bjorn, he, he is funny because he does these long streams, getting drunk, and, and it is pretty funny to watch, but, uh, but yeah, he he's not the same person anymore, he's not the streaming king anymore, I don't know if a chiller will be the new content king, or what will happen, the dumb, the dumb thing about a chiller is that he just doesn't go out at all, so... I don't see him getting that big like Bjorn did at one point, but... I don't know, the community is dying and... Um, I don't know what's gonna happen. It was pretty funny the other day when uh, Sadie got uh, got taken down by SJC. It, it was pretty funny. Uh, the guy Magnolia Seven said that that there were one billion that there were more than one billion IP addresses uh, attacking Sadie. It was a pretty badass attack. Yeah, when the blade is not streaming anymore, when blade's not doing fire sales anymore, Chile is the new king. He rages so much, it's pretty funny to see how much rage this guy has. It's pretty funny, the, the, the thing he says, uh, you are the scum under my nails, you are the scum under my toenails. It's actually an Eastern European thing, you know, that's the thing people say in Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe. I have never heard it in Denmark, but here in, in Bulgaria I have heard a couple of people say it. So, so, so it's not something, he's, he's original, he, it's not some, he's not original doing it. It's an Eastern European thing, you know. That's what kids say to each to each other here, here. You know, when they when they try to uh, when 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 kids try to diss each other in Bulgaria, they they say things like "You are the scum under my toenail," and so so that's where he gets it from. It's not something that that he that he uh, invented. He didn't invent the scum under my toenail thing. Pretty funny how he stole it. Never has been, never will be. Also pretty funny with so busy living homeless now. <laughs> he had, he had, I remember last time I saw his stream before he was homeless and I was like amazed, man. This guy has a pretty cool car. He has a, he has a really cool car. Uh, what was it? I, I don't remember. I think it was uh, it was some of the it, it was a Volkswagen Jeep or something. It was a pretty cool car he has. But uh, I guess he got thrown out without the car, so he's worse off than SJC. SJC at least has the flexes, but uh, so busy has nothing. <laughs> living in a homeless shelter, 
but you know people that are, are wondering if it's real or not I don't know but I saw him cry the other day so it could be real it's pretty pretty crazy to see he's so busy <laughs> so toxic <laughs> But 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 why the fuck did why the fuck did so Doxy get on IP two again and none of the others got on? You know, SJC didn't get on, Canvel didn't get on again. I don't know who else got a couple of others got removed. But only so Doxy got back in. I'm pretty sure that so Doxy paid his way. He paid some of the mods. I'm 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 ninety nine percent sure that Zodoxy paid some of the mods, and it's pretty lame, you know. They let Zodoxy in, but actually SJC SJC has more viewers than than most of the IP two streamers. If if uh, SJC was an IP two, he would be number one ninety percent of the time. SJC would be number one, and they put Zodoxy back in. Why the fuck would you put Zodoxy back in when when this guy has like 50 viewers or something like that? So it doesn't make sense, you know, that they put him back on and they didn't put SJC back on. I'm pretty sure that, that he must have paid some mods off. And it's pretty lame. Probably if I paid some of the mods, then I would not be a terrorist either and they would let me in. But uh, yeah, I don't have the money to, to pay them thousands of dollars. But I think Zodoxy is dumb enough to pay them like 10k, you know. The word, the word on the street is that, that Zodoxy paid 10k to the mods to get back on, on the network. So, I don't know if it's true, but I think it's plausible, you know, because he had these amounts of... These large amounts of money he had them, and and he and he is the type that would pay that would pay to get back on. So I think I I'm pretty sure he paid to get back on. The question is how much did he pay? You know, it's pro it's probably in the range of of ten k or something. If he if he just wanted to pay one k, then then they wouldn't uh, care about him. So I. I think he probably paid around 10k as, as the world is on the streets. There was also some other channel before him, some comedian channel that, that, that they say paid to get on there and now they were removed again. So a couple of people are paying to get on IP2 and it's pretty lame that, 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 that they are using the community like that. But on the other hand, I do understand that they need some money to keep it all running because somebody has to pay for the server, somebody has to pay for the domain, some, you know, but they need to find a better way to do it, you know, it, 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 it shouldn't be like that, you know, that, that they put on shit streamers, you know, when they, when they pay. No, actually, I think he had a lot of his family's money when he was still not homeless. I think he had... <clears throat> you know, maybe that is why he got thrown out. Maybe he stole money from his mother. Maybe he stole tank, you know, because a lot of Pakistanis, they are like that, you know, they share the money. Uh, they have money in the house somewhere. They have a large amount of money and you know, people can, everybody from the family can use those. These, I have, my best friend when I was small was a Pakistani guy. So I know a lot of Pakistanis and uh, uh, they have money. They usually have a lot of money in the house and you know, people can, people can, uh, people from the family can just use from this money. And it's no problem, you know, but they are taught not to use an excess amount. But maybe so Doxy took 10k from the money and paid the mods and then he got in a fight with his mother. Somebody said he, he, he hit his mother or something. I don't know if that is true at all. 
I think it is. It, it could be that he stole money from the family's uh, money box. They have a money box at home, and he paid IB2 to get on there. They found out, and he got in a fight with his mother and his father because he, he took a lot of a large of mother, a large of amount of money, and. Uh, when they asked him why why did you take 10k from the money box you know and then he said i wanted to get back on ip2 and then his family probably got crazy mad of of him you know what the fuck is ip2 so i can imagine that something like that happened and uh, and uh, and that's why he got in a fight with his family i think it is plausible that that actually it was because of IP2 that all this happened and now he's homeless. They even took away his car, the poor soul. He's worse off than SJC. So the, it's pretty strange because he, he had a lot of money. Trust me, this guy had a lot of money. He had a very nice car. I saw his car in one of his streams and it was a, and it was a really nice, it was a Volkswagen Jeep or a, or something like that. It was a really nice car with leather interior and everything. It, it was a really, really nice car. So he, he has money. Trust me, Pakistanis and, and Indians, they have money. Where, that Pakistanis and Indians, Indians that live in the West, they have a lot of money. So I'm sure that, that he had a lot of money. Not money that he earned, but his family's money. His family had money, you know. They do business, they do, he, he is pretty rich, so, so I think they just left him to the lions, Joe Doxy, and uh, teach him a lesson, so it's pretty, pretty funny to see. <laughs> so yeah. That's it with the community. What else happened? Let me think. Maybe I should do some recaps. <laughs> What else happened in the community? I'm hoping RV7 or 6 goes on off soon. It would be pretty funny. I actually saw the new RV on uh, that guy Rich on Red stream. Uh, Casey got a new RV and it's one of those with expandable uh, that expands, you know, these big RVs where the sides expand, they, Casey have bought such an RV, so the next RV could be pretty crazy. They, they're gonna have a pretty big RV to, to mess around with. I really don't do that much currently, my daily plan. I have three dogs, so most of my time it goes with, with taking care of my dogs. And uh, I'm watching a lot of streams, so I'm, I'm basically not doing anything. Uh, I don't have a daily plan. Uh, that's also why I decided to stream because I noticed that that most of the streamers, it's people that don't really have a, a big daily plan. You know, it's people that that grew out of uh, having a big social circle. When I was young, I had a big circle, a social circle. I, I had like uh, 20 friends we met up daily in Denmark. We, we did a lot of shit. Also, when I moved to Bulgaria, I had a big social circle. But now that I got older and I have my three dogs, I kind of not, I, I kind of don't have this big social circle anymore. And I noticed that most of the streamers are like that. So I decided that maybe streaming is the thing for me because, you know, most of the people in there don't have big social circles and they are using the streaming to compensate for that. So 
that's why I decided to stream. I, I noticed that most of the streamers, you know, they are not, they, they aren't people with big social circles. None of them have big social circles anymore. A lot of them probably had big social circles, circles, but but uh, not anymore. And and so now now they became streamers, and uh, I think ninety nine percent of them are like that. You know, none of them none of them have have so Bjorn doesn't have social circles. Ice Poseidon doesn't have uh, social circles. Captain Content doesn't have, none of them have big social circles. All of them are people that that are like living their life more or less alone. So exactly if, if you're like that, then you are the perfect streamer. For some reason, uh, streamers are not people that have big social circles and that's what I noticed. So that's why I thought that uh, maybe I'm perfect for streaming because all the other streamers, they don't have big social circles. You can clearly see it. They mostly stream alone and if they stream with other people, it's usually other streamers. So they don't have any friends anymore. They probably have friends, but they don't hang around with them. You know, so that's the thing that could make you a good streamer. Apparently, if you have a lot of friends, they're probably not going to want to deal with your streaming, uh, your life with them. So for some reason, you know, people would who doesn't have social circles, they are perfect for streaming. So, yeah, so I think you would be perfect for streaming <laughs> if that's the case. Then then you should definitely, definitely start streaming and do it sooner than later because if you do it in one year, there will be hundreds of, of new streamers fighting to, to come up. You know, if IP2 grows, there's going to be a hundred of new streamers fighting to get on there and you will have a very hard time to get on there. But if you do it right now, there's like 10 people trying to get on there or 20 people trying to get on there and you have a chance. In a year from now, if it grows, which it's, it's not really sure it's going to grow, but if it grows, there's going to be hundreds of streamers trying to get on there, you know, every day some guy decides he wants to start streaming and it's gonna be exp exponentially much harder to get on there. So if you want to have any chance of getting on IP2 easily or, or becoming a, a streamer easily, then it's a good time to do it now. Perhaps you can use my videos to, to guide you what to buy, you know, the equipment is not that hard to get, but it, it takes a lot of experience. Don't expect that you can just go out and stream and make content. It takes, you know, all the streamers, they had at least 5-10 year experience b before they became something. So it's going to take your experience in the, in the start. It's going to be hard, you know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be psychologically hard your mind is gonna, it's gonna explode. You cannot imagine the feeling it is when you stream outside. It, it takes a lot of guts and it's not just guts, it takes, uh, it takes experience. You have to do it again and again and again and again. You get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better and it's gonna take you at least a year to get to be a good streamer. You cannot just None of none of the streamers just took a camera and was good. All of them they had like years of experience before that. So it's gonna take you years. If you look at any streamer, Captain Content, any of the streamers that just grew up, they had years. They had ten years. Captain Content had ten years of doing streams with with the same amount of viewers I have to three viewers. So. It's going to take you years to, to get up to the point where you are comfortable doing this. And in the start, you're gonna, it's going to seem like maybe you cannot do this. Maybe this isn't for you, but it, it is for everybody. But you have to keep doing it. You have to keep trying. You have to press yourself. You have to keep doing, 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 and you will learn it. It's something everybody can learn, but it takes time. You have to accept 
that it takes time. You cannot do it in one day. You, you, you simply have to accept that it will take you at least a year. You have to know that from the start. So you have to start doing it and keep doing it for at least a year to see any results. You will not see any big results in the first year. That is guaranteed. Well, why don't you do like I do? If you if you wonder if you should stream on YouTube or Twitch, you just stream on both platforms. If you go to Twitch right now on Crazy Bulgar, look look in the description and click on my Twitch channel, and you will see that I am live right now on Twitch. Right now I am live on YouTube. I am live on Twitch. I am live on D Live. I am live on Mixer, and I am live on Periscope. So I am live on five platforms right now. So I'm I'm streaming through WeStream, so I'm streaming on all five platforms at once. So you can stream on both platforms at once. Just just do both platforms at once and you will see if you have more success on Twitch, then you can concentrate on Twitch. If you have more success on YouTube, then you can concentrate on YouTube. Do like I do. Use Restream. It's free. It costs zero dollars. And you can stream on, on all platforms at once. And you can see which one gives you the, the larger audience. Which one is more fitting for you. Which one does not ban you. See with, how it does, you know. Look look at my description on my Twitch channel, click on it and you will see that I'm live right now on Twitch too. So I'm multi-streaming on multiple platforms and, and that is that is a good way to start. Maybe it's not a good way in the long term, but it's a really good way to start out your stream. You put yourself on all platforms like I did, Mixer, YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, DLive, and see which one, you know, which one gives you the more, the larger audience. It's probably going to be YouTube, but it could be Twitch, for example. Probably not going to be DLive or Mixer, but uh, who knows, maybe it would be. So, so, do it like I do, stream on all platforms. And, uh, you know, find the name because, uh, because uh, Bjorn hates them, it's not, you know, it's not going to get you anywhere. Find some interesting name. No, it doesn't cost more da data. It costs the same data as streaming on one platform. When you stream with Restream, Restream.io. When you restream with that, you you send your stream to Restream, and Restream sends it to the other five platforms. So you only pay one data. You pay like you pay the same if you stream to YouTube or if you stream to all five platforms. So check out Restream.io. And uh, there you will you will see it's it's totally free. You go in there and you when you restream to restream you only stream to restream and restream they stream you to all five platforms. You can stream to even more. You can stream to a hundred platforms at once, but uh, most of them they are unknown. So so you might as well do it. Luciano 22, okay. Let me just screenshot that I'm gonna check you out. I'm gonna subscribe to you. So you will have one more subscriber. Mm. I'm gonna check you out afterwards. I don't know, you probably don't have any videos because uh, Twitch deletes them after a week or so. So... 
but yeah, to try doing it through restream and streaming on all platforms. Maybe one of them will give you a lot of viewers and, and then you can see if you want to continue only on that platform or you want to restream. Because the thing is, YouTube, YouTube lets you al allows you to put a lot of music without taking your channel down. But if you stream on, on uh, Twitch, they're gonna kill you pretty fast. Now with the new rules, Twitch, they are not allowing you to put any copyrighted music at all or they will delete your channel. So if you're doing any kind of music, uh, then Twitch is not the case. Then Twitch will not, uh, uh, Twitch will not, Twitch will not let you go well with it. So if you want to, 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 to have like, for example, Landon and all the other people, they play music and things like that. That's only gonna go on YouTube and it's, and it's only with some music. You know, some music will get your channel closed. So, uh, but but Twitch right now they they are becoming tougher on this. So it's gonna be harder to do this on Twitch. Probably impossible. So uh, I don't know about D Life and Mixer. They are probably more liberal. You know, I have had. When I played music on some of my desktop streams, YouTube always recognizes them, but I have never heard anything from either DLive or Mixer or even Twitch. So, so far, Twitch has not, none of the platform have complained about my music. Only, only YouTube have complained about my music, but they didn't take me down. They just monetized it on behalf of the artist. So I cannot monetize them myself, but I'm not monetized anyway. But I would not be able to monetize the music on YouTube. But D-Life, Mixer and Twitch, so far they were more liberal. But Twitch is getting hardcore now. So D-Life and Mixer are gonna allow more music to be played. So... So if, if you are planning on, on, on playing some music, which you say you are not, you know. I don't know about the, the quality, yeah. But I hate, I hate them all. I hate Twitch and Mixer and D-Live because of the chat. It's pretty annoying, I think. I like the YouTube chat. It's more, it's more focused about text. You know, in in especially Mixer and Twitch also, there's a lot of uh, em emojis and shit. Especially Mixer, when you watch Ice Poseidon stream, you cannot even read the chat from all the from all the things falling down down, all the icons and all the shit that's falling down, all the em emojis and all that shit. So that's pretty annoying and, and Twitch is also, you cannot follow the chat that well on, on Twitch. It goes very fast for some reason, but I think YouTube is more chat oriented. If you like to watch the chat and have fun with the chat, many streamers, the most fun part about their streams is their chat. So if that's something you like, if you like to, to watch the chat, then YouTube is, is in my opinion, it's the preferred platform because uh, in YouTube, it's a lot about the chat. The, the others, there's so much going on in the chat that if you write some something, nobody is gonna view it. But in YouTube, it's more relaxed. Maybe it's because there's less viewers, I don't know. But uh, I like YouTube's chat a lot more than, than any of the other platforms. So... I think that, but you should try with Restream and, and stream on all five platforms. You will find followers on all platforms, so. That's definitely something you should try, I think. And do it now, don't wait too long, because if you wait too long, uh, the bar from, for, for getting into the community will be much, much harder. So 
if you want to get into the community, it's, it's going to be very easy now compared to in, in one year. In one year, it's going to be impossible to get in. You have to do really crazy shit. But right now, there is an, a little opening. It's still harder than it was a year ago, but right now, there's still a chance of getting in all these communities. But in a year from now, there's going to be many thousands trying to get in to different com communities, whether it's, it's IP2 or, or it's some other community that that comes up later in the game. It's going to be much harder to get in any of these communities. So if you want to stream, it's better to do it now because time is not in your on your side. If you wait a year for some reason, it's going to be much harder to get in there. So it's better to get in now and get your name out there than in a year when there's thousands of other people trying to do it. Right now, there's maybe 20 people trying to get their name out, you know, and, and a lot of them are having a very hard time of it. Even me, I have a very hard time of it. It is pretty hard right now, but in a year from now, it's going to be impossible. You have to do really amazing or crazy stuff to get in the community. So you better start doing it tomorrow because else you, you're going to have no chance. If you wait a couple of months, it's going to be much, much harder. And that's why I'm also doing it. Maybe I don't have the greatest content, but, but I'm building myself and I'm learning to stream. At the same time, I'm doing 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 it at a point where this is still a niche community. So when this is a niche community, it's much easier to get into the community. If I wait a year, then I would not be able to get into the community. There would be a lot of other people trying to get in. So from that point of view, it's it's really if you plan on streaming, then do it now because. It's gonna be so impossible to do it in a year from now. So think of it of that way. Think of it in that way. If if nothing else, you know, motivates you to, to start right now, then do it because it's gonna be really hard in a year when thousands of people are trying to get into the community. I see daily new people trying to get into community to the community. I have a, a couple of viewers that are trying to get into the community. I have Roach Gang, I have some of EBZ viewers that are trying to stream. And in a year from now, there's gonna be hundreds of these guys. So right now, you better hurry up because in a year from now, you're not gonna be able to get in. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, you have to be really amazing and you cannot become amazing because it takes a lot of time to get amazing. So it's going to take you a couple of years to get amazing. So better start doing it now. Even if you do lame things, just walk around with the camera. See how it feels. See, see how hard it is to walk around with the camera. You don't even have to interact with people. Just try it out. Keep doing it. Just try to, to learn and to get into the community while you still can. Because it's going to be a problem. What country are you in? All countries have content. What do you mean you're in a country where it has no content? All countries have content. What, what country are you in? I think that all countries have some content. It just takes time to find it and... What I do, I look at Facebook events and I just look what events are up there and, and just try to crash some events from Facebook. When you go to Facebook and you're going to see a lot of events and just find something that might seem interesting and just go there and film. You don't don't even plan on, on, on interacting with people in the start. Just go there, try to hold the camera and see how it feels. and. And you're going to find different things just from Facebook events. You're going to find things that, that could be interesting. And 
that's an easy way to do it, you know, Facebook events, and there's a lot of people posting new events daily, there's like hundreds of events daily, no matter what country you are in, find some event that could be interesting, and just go there and see what happens, just film and, and, and see, you don't even have to interact with people in the start, just get used to holding the camera, and because it is one of the first thing you will see, it is hard to hold the camera in front of people in the start, you know, people are looking at you, you look like an idiot, and you have to get over that, so that's one thing you have to learn, you know, holding the camera in front of people, just try to learn that, see if you can, you can do it, but just, just get used to it, just get used to walking around with the selfie stick while people are looking at you. It, it is hard, it seems easy, but you will find out it's pretty hard, but just keep doing it, get used to it, and then more things will come to you naturally. Whoa, South Africa! Well, South Africa is gonna be content city. There is no other live streamers from South Africa. How can you how can you say that that uh, that there's no when there's no other streamers? You are the only South African streamer. You have a great chance of of getting in. You know because there are no other streamers. So you have a big advantage. You have a big advantage, I think, because. Uh, in New York, if you were in New York, there were there are hundred streamers trying to get in. So the fact that you are in South Africa, it's, it's actually better for you because it's going to be easier to get in there. You can film things that no other people can film. So I think it's it's it it's easier for you to get in from South Africa than it is from New York or LA. If you're trying to get in from LA, you have to provide some really crazy content. But uh, in South Africa, there's no streamers there. You are the first South African. You will be the king of South Africa. You will be the content god of South Africa. No other, no other South Africans are, are trying to get into the community. So you have a big, big, big advantage right there. So use it while you can because in one year there's going to be five or ten people from South Africa that's going to try to get in into the community. So if you don't hurry up, you're going to lose out on that advantage and you're not going to be the only South African. There's going to be other South Africans on IP2, on Ice Poseidon Live. So you better hurry up because uh, time is ticking and uh, tomorrow could be the day when the when the when the first South African streamer goes on IP2 and then you will have a disadvantage because you have to be better than him or com you will be compared to him. Right now you are not going to be compared to anybody because you are the only South African streamer so that's a big advantage. Uh, don't don't do all the excuses. I have to fix my car. I have to do this and that Just take the camera and and see how hard it is to film people go out there film people get used to it because you will need it You will need to have a couple of months of content Where you just train you, you just have to train to film people and maybe even talking to people but in the Firstly, just try to go out there and talk to people and see how it feels. You're going to see it's very hard and it's going to take uh, training. It's going to take trial. You're going to have to try again and again and again and you have to get better and better. But if you just fix your car and think that you're going to provide great content, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be dissatisfied, you're gonna, it's gonna ruin, it, it's better to do it when there's no content and just train, just go out there, train, 
do an hour walk around in the city, show us your town. You're gonna have no viewers, you're gonna have no viewers in the start, you're gonna have zero to five viewers in the start. But don't do it for the viewers, just do it for you to learn it and for you to uh, have the feeling to, for you to uh, for you to get over the feeling that people are looking at you because when it, that's that's one of the things that that you have to get used to that people are looking at you they are not used to it you feel like an idiot and that's one of the things that you have to get used to and it takes training so just do the training now forget about the car just go out there film some stuff and just get the training in filming while people are looking at you because that's the thing that's gonna that's gonna get you big when you when you have a couple of months of training with people looking at you while you're filming then you will be able to provide content even if you fix your car you cannot provide any content because you have no training so get out there do some training doesn't matter if there's content or not just walk around like this guy cheap charlie did he walked around for years and got really big on just walking around and not saying a word to the camera just walk around and film Uh, don't buy don't buy expensive phone. I'll show you what phone I bought. I have. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom quickly, and I'm gonna bring my phone so you can see. I'm gonna bring the case so you can see which phone I have. So don't buy an a expensive phone because it's not worth it. Uh, the phone you need to buy, I would recommend right now, the phone I have is a Redmi 8. It costs around, uh, it costs around $130. And uh, the reason you don't have to buy, you don't buy an expensive phone is because uh, you're going to be filming with a bit weight of 3500 bytes. But, you know, the cameras, they are, they are usually filming at like 10k. If you just film a video, it's filming at like 10k bytes. But on streaming, you're only filming with 3.5. So 
whatever camera you buy, whatever expensive phone you buy, it's going to be totally overkill. If you buy a Samsung S20, the only good thing you're going to be using from the camera is the stabilization. So it's just money out of the window. If you buy an expensive phone, it's just going to be money out of the window. So I would recommend that you buy a, a new phone. It has to be one that just came out because the battery is going to be better. I would recommend right now there is this phone, Motorola G G8 Power. If you buy the Motorola G8 Power, it's going to cost around $140. No, it's, it's a little more expensive. Uh, it's around $160 or something. You can buy the Motorola G8 Power Lite. The Lite is uh, $130, $40. The Motorola G8 Power, right now, that just came out not long time ago. That, that, that's an optimal phone to start streaming because uh, the camera quality is going to be on top. It's a 16 megapixel camera and mine right now is a 12 megapixel camera and you can see the quality is great for streaming. So if I did videos then yes, then you could buy a more expensive phone and it would be worth it. But when you're streaming it's not worth it because uh, you're streaming with like 3525 kilobytes per second or whatever it's called. But when you're doing a video, it's actually being recorded at like 10k uh, kilobytes a second. So it doesn't come near any recorded video. So it's just an overkill. If you buy an expensive phone, it's, it's totally an overkill when you're streaming because you are streaming at a much less quality than it is to record videos. When you record videos, the quality is much higher. But when you're streaming, you're never going to get all that quality you paid for because of the data limit. You know, you can only upload with uh, uh, 35 kilobytes a second, 3500 a second or 4000. If you go above that, then uh, unless it's 5G, then then, uh, then your internet will not be able to handle it. So it's much better to, to buy a, a cheaper phone. So if, if I had to buy a phone right now and start streaming, I would buy the Motorola G8 Power. There's a new one, it's called G8 Power. It's, it's released two months ago or something like that. That's the one I would buy right now if I had to, to start today. I would either buy the G8 Power or the G8 Power Lite, depending if I have uh, $150 or $170, that's what they cost. So if you can afford to pay $170, then buy that. Don't buy a $1000 phone, don't do like Landon did, he bought a S10, it's not worth it at all, uh, unless it's 5G, if it's a 5G phone, but you don't need to start with that. Just start with a normal phone and the best thing you can do is buy a cheaper phone because the quality is going to be the same. There's going to be no difference. If you look at my quality here, there's no difference from someone streaming with a Samsung S S10 and I'm streaming with a really cheap phone. So you don't need an expensive phone. That's why I have the gimbal because uh, my phone doesn't have image stabilization. So the gimbal does that work for me. But I think the G8, it has image stabilization. So you can't get off without a gimbal. It's still going to look good. But uh, that's the difference between some of the more expensive phones is they have better image stabilization. That could help you in streaming. But other than that, the camera quality, it, uh, it's not worth it because it's going to be the same quality because you're streaming at one fourth of the capacity of the camera. So it doesn't really matter if you're streaming with a 48 megapixel camera or a 12 megapixel camera because they are, they're both going to be streaming at 3500 kilobytes per second. So 
it's gonna, there's going to be almost no difference. Yeah, that that's the thing, you know, people don't know, they think I'm buying an S10, but they, they, it looks better because of the stabilization, If but if you have a gimbal, it's going to look exactly the same as an S10 or S20. The only thing is that the S20 have 5G, so there you can raise the kilobytes to like 6000 or something like that and stream in 4K, and then it will look better. But uh, as long as you're streaming at uh, normal data rates at, at 4,000, 3,500, then, then that's going to be the limiting factor, not the camera. So don't buy an expensive phone. You're just throwing money out of the window. Just buy a, a new phone that's uh, okay quality. A Nokia C2, uh, there. that's, I think... You can try and see how it looks at st when streaming. I don't exactly know that model, but uh, but you don't need an expensive phone. You just need one of the. It has to have at least 12 megapixel camera, 12 megapixel camera, and it's gonna be okay more or less. If it has below that, then uh, then uh, the quality will be worse. But around 12 megapixel or above that. Then, then the, the then it's gonna be the same quality as a top model phone, because you know because of the the kilobytes per second you're streaming with, they're gonna be much lower than a normal video, so it's gonna look the same. You know if you have a 48 megapixel or a 12 megapixel, when you're live streaming, there's gonna be no difference in the quality, almost no difference. So. Don't go out and buy an expensive phone for now, you know, it's, it's not worth it at all. That That's also what Landon did, he bought an S10, but uh, it's actually not worth it at all because uh, his quality is the same as mine. So he gave a thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars or whatever it costs to get the same quality as me. And uh, I have a bigger battery than him. so. And I paid the hundred thirty dollars, so he kind of get fucked on that. If he, he's only using it for streaming, so he kind of wasted four hundred dollars on nothing, you know. So it's not worth it. Buy a buy buy a cheap new phone, one of the new ones that just came out, because the battery is gonna be better. If you buy a phone that has been in the shop for a year, then the battery is gonna be almost ruined. So buy a phone that just came out, you know, and then the battery is going to be in tip top condition and it's going to be better. Uh, and make sure it's at least 12 megapixel or 16 megapixel is the new thing now. Get a 16 megapixel phone like the Motorola G8 Power and, and you're going to have the best quality. You're going to have better quality than most of the streamers. Use your money on data instead, you know. Get a high bit rate. Don't stream at 2500. Stream at at least 3500, and then then you're gonna have better quality than than 80% of the streamers, even though they they run with Samsungs and and things like that. So so yeah. How long have I been on here? I have to uh, walk my dogs in a moment, so I'm just gonna uh, smoke a last smoke, and then I think I then I think I'm gonna end this and take my dogs for a walk. So I I didn't uh, think it would be so so long this stream, but when you start to talk about the community and thing, things like that, then uh, you forget about the time, and then you just uh, talk about it. I use a lot of my time watching the streamers and uh, it's a big part of my life watching them so I want to be part of it too and uh, it's the most interesting thing right now I, I don't watch any television at all I only watch live streams and I used to watch a lot of uh, television but uh, 
but uh, you know uh, right now you cannot watch any television you there's so many things happening in live streaming that that that's the only thing you are focused on and I haven't watched television for for years actually just watch YouTube most of the time I'm so happy with these bags I will finally have a nice place to put all my accessories Yeah, it's really hard to watch a movie. I have there's so many movies I, I want to watch, but I cannot get to watching them because there's always something going on in live streaming, and uh, it, it 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 could change the world totally because you no, know, I was a person that watched movies all the time. I watched a couple of movies a day almost, and right now I haven't watched any movie for. For half a year or something like that, I'm only the the moment I I maybe a half a year ago or something I saw Ice Poseidon for the first time, and uh, from that moment on I didn't watch any movies. I only watched live streams, and and there's so many go, so many things going on on live streams that that you cannot get yourself to watch any movies. So. I think it's gonna change the whole world because uh, when you st first start to watch these live streams it, it, it totally stops you from watching anything else. You can only watch live streams because whenever you have time to watch a movie you rather watch a live stream and you can always watch the movie later. So it, it, it is gonna change the world I think and, and, and it's amazing actually. But yeah guys, I think I'm gonna sign off here. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it certainly. And uh, Yeah, the, uh, the family cannot uh, they cannot imagine what you're doing with these live streams, you know, there. But if they started to watch them, it would be the same, you know, but but it's hard to explain to people that haven't watched them, so. But the young people, you know, when they grow up, they, they are only going to watch live streams. Yeah. So it's going so, so to uh, change the world totally. All the young people are going to learn this, you know, from school. When other people, when other kids show them, look this, look at this live stream from my phone, and all the kids, they are only gonna be watching live streams when they grow up. There's not gonna be any TV at all, so it's gonna kill all the television industries. Nobody's gonna sit and watch Discovery Channel or whatever, you know. So, yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna go walk my dogs, and um, it was fun talking with people in the chat and doing the stream so I'm gonna see you guys in the future thank you very much for watching I'm gonna end it here I'm getting a little bit drunk <clears throat> So see you guys, thank you for tuning into my uh, stream and I see you in the future.